That film did grow out of Carl Sandburg, Echoes and Silences, because Paul Shire was very close friend of Carlotta Monterey. Carlotta Monterey was Eugene O'Neill's wife for the last, I don't know, maybe 30 years of his life at least. He said, uh, you know, I think that I could get the rights, uh, uh, I could get the right from Carlotta to let us do a film on Eugene O'Neill. Well, I thought that would be a wonderful idea. I loved the idea because I knew O'Neill's work, of course, and, and I knew that it was a great story and, um, uh, and would also give me a chance to, because I was very interested again in, in using actors. And um, uh, so it ended up being uh, two and a half hours, Eugene O'Neill, A Glory of Ghosts. And my idea was to, uh, I mean, what I wanted to do was to dramatize, you know, uh, uh, sections of um, uh, The Hairy Ape and, and um, Anna Christie and, you know, all the way up from, um, to, to his final long day's journey in Tonight and The Iceman Cometh. And I was able, um, mostly because people wanted to be in the film, the Eugene O'Neill film. And also, by that time, I guess I had, you know, enough, enough of a track record so that people felt that I, you know, I might, that I might do a good job w w with it. And so I had Jason Robards, who said yes immediately. And this is um, uh, a group, the group of actors. O'Neill was the quintessential theatrical person. And so I decided to do the whole thing, uh, not the whole thing, but, but to set up uh, in a theater with the actors. Uh, you see them coming in, saying hello to each other, and they, um, they each play uh, various roles. We did uh, excerpts from eight, from eight of the plays. And so uh, this is Mario uh, Peebles. You can't see Jason Robards here but there's uh, uh, Tony Lobianco, Blythe Dana, James Norton, and me looking serious, serious and, and worried. <laughs> In New London, the actual house that uh, uh, Eugene O'Neill and his family lived in for years is exactly as it was. The furniture, they managed to get the original furnishings. They managed to, to recreate it. And we staged Long Day's Journey in Tonight, excerpts from Long Day's Journey in Tonight. And this is Geraldine Fitzgerald, and this is Jason Robards. Jason Robards saying, for God's sake, Mary, forget the past. And she says, the past is the present, something like that. And this, of course, is the Here Am I and um, all the people working on the, uh, on the film. It was very lucky to have the actual, uh, to be able to use the actual location and so that we did a lot of shooting there. Uh, I wanted to be able to use four central characters in his life to interview them as though they were living people and let them tell me things that I wanted to know about, uh, about O'Neill and, uh, and the people that he was involved with. Uh, but then it had to be clear to the audience that these were actors. And the question was, do you just put them up there and then do a lower third that says that they're an actor? And, uh, uh, and it seemed that that, that that was really going to be too disturbing and asking too much of your audience to, to figure out, well, they're not, this is actors playing this character. You don't want to explain in the film. You want to do it. And so I got the happy idea of uh, seeing the actors very, very close to the beginning, to the beginning of the film, making up in the makeup room, 
below the theater, and each one of them has a line that, uh, uh, that she says in the film, but that identifies uh, what he or she, uh, uh, the connection with O'Neill. And it's very clear that they are actors, they're getting ready to play a part. So Caldwell, who played Carlotta Monterey, who was his third wife, actually, but who was a very, very powerful character in, uh, in his life and in the film. And she says he was a black Irishman. And she says these things about how difficult he was. The fact that I had been an actress, I think, made a great deal of difference, not to them, because none of them, you know, nobody ever heard of me as an actress. But I think it was very helpful because Instinctively, you understand things from the actor's point of view. I knew when I was getting what I wanted, and I knew when I was not getting what I wanted. And I remember when we were shooting the scene from the Iceman cometh, and Jason had done it, you know, a hundred times on Broadway, and here I am, you know, only the second, third time maybe that I'd ever worked with, with actors on film. And I am going to have to t tell Jason what to do. No. Actually, obviously, I didn't have to direct him. But at, some, at one point, we were in close-up. And as we know, film is not the same thing in the theater. And it really was coming out a little over the top. So I had to get my courage up and say, uh, Jason, and he's such a wonderful guy that, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't intimidating at all, but still I was, you know, pretty nervous. And I said, Jason, you know, um, uh, it's film and we're in close-up. Could you maybe take it down, you know, just, just a little, just take it down a little? And he said, oh, of course, Perry, I'm such a ham. You know, I mean, that, that was the way he reacted. And I got the GA for Eugene O'Neill, A Glory of Ghosts, and marvelous notices. New York Times said it was the best documentary of the year. 